So apparently this car is now called the 2019 Toyota Yaris, but its name has changed quite a few times over the past few years. For example, the 2018 model years, those were called the Yaris IA, and just a few years before that, it was known as a Scion IA. And the name kind of gives you a hint about this car. As many times as its name has changed, the design has remained very similar and not much has been updated at all. And that means this is a car that has trouble fitting in. It can't find its right identity in the market. It's not sure exactly where it wants to compete and all around it just lacks a lot of the features and technologies that we've come to expect from modern day cars. So in today's video, I'm gonna walk you guys around the exterior, interior and powertrain of this 2019 Yaris to explain to you guys why the 2020 Corolla is a much better buy. Starting off under the hood of the new 2019 Yaris is where we see the first main issue with this car, and it's that powertrain. The engine is only a 1.5 liter, naturally aspirated, direct injected four cylinder engine, which produces a total of 106 horsepower and 103 pound feet of torque. And obviously I understand this is a cheap little budget car. Not everyone is gonna wanna go drag racing with it as soon as they buy it, but 106 horsepower is a really, really small number to the point where you might have trouble passing people on the highway. It's just not sufficient for a modern car. Even a cheap modern car like this, you buy the Corolla for a little bit of extra money, as I'm gonna say so many times in this video, and you get more horsepower, a better powertrain, probably better fuel economy, I'll have to check, and just all around a better drivetrain. On a more positive note though, the Yaris is still available with an old school manual transmission. You can have it with either a six speed manual or a six speed automatic if you can't row the gears yourself. So the exterior is probably the most obvious area where you can see this car used to be a Scion because it kind of has a younger, cheaper feel than a lot of modern day Toyotas, which is exactly the space that Scion was trying to fill. But then of course, back in I believe 2014, 2015, Scion was deprecated and it became a Toyota and now it doesn't really fill a space at all and the exterior design kind of reflects that. It's similar to the 2020 Corolla from the front end, but everything else is just kind of an unassuming blob. There's not anything unique or special about the exterior of this car that's not pulled from a Scion or a Mazda or a new Toyota and it just doesn't really have a personality. Things start off in the front of the car where we see one of the very few features that has been updated throughout its lifetime. It's this sport honeycomb mesh grill. It has a fairly nice design to it. I really like the chrome accent piece they added along the bottom and along the exterior. It really helps flare out the front end of this car and make it look slightly better, slightly less cheap, but obviously it is very similar to the new 2020 Corolla hatch, the Corolla sedan, even the SE that you can get nowadays. Those cars all look a lot more fleshed out and aggressive and really stand out more on the road, even with this somewhat scaled down version of their grill. Also, one of the other features that I guess I kind of like on the front of this car are these halogen headlamps. Again, they haven't really changed since the old Scion days, but they do have a nice look to them. They look a little bit like fish eyes to me, but they kind of match everything else on this exterior and provide a somewhat more uniform look. You also get a few different options regarding the style and size of the wheels. I believe it's available with either 15 or 16 inch wheels. I actually kind of like this design. It doesn't look like an alloy wheel. Actually, it does. It's got a nice kind of dark chrome design to it. It actually looks really nice here on the side of the car where there aren't a ton of other features. You do have nice body colored side mirrors here with integrated turn signals. Those are fairly nice, I guess, but you know, other things around the car just feel cheap. I'd like to see some chrome integrated around the window trim. These door handles do feel a little bit cheap. And then in the rear of the car, we've got old taillights that look a little bit like a Mazda or a freaking diesel. And then in the rear of the car, we do have a chrome exhaust tip and some somewhat normal taillights that look very similar to a Scion or a Mazda, the two places where this car was born from. But that's really all there is to say about the exterior design of this car. Like I said, not a ton of features, not a ton of technologies. There's not a lot going on here. And it's all kind of mishmash from Toyota and Mazda and Scion and those three manufacturers that I've mentioned probably a million times in this video. But let's hop in and see what's going on in there. So 
So the interior of the 2019 Yaris is just like the powertrain and the exterior design of this car. And that means all on its own, it looks like a fairly nice, affordable budget car. But as soon as you put it up next to the slightly more expensive Corolla or even other competitors in this segment, like the Nissan Versa, it just feels a little bit weak, especially when you realize that the majority of the components in this interior are pulled from the last generation of Mazda vehicles. So cars like the old Mazda 3, the old Mazda 6, even the new CX-3, that's where the majority of the technology in this car is pulled from. And honestly, the old generation Mazdas were not particularly good when it came to technology. Now here we are, you know, four or five years later, and it's very outdated. I'm noticing that especially with these two digital screens on either side of the speedometer. Very low resolution. I hate where the tachometer is placed. Very hard to see, especially with the sunlight coming in from the window, casting weird glare over the whole thing. Just a terrible all around design in regards to the gauge cluster. Same thing goes for the steering wheel. Again, very, very similar to what you would find in a Mazda, maybe pulling directly from some older Mazdas, except with a Toyota badge on it. But the only issue is it's not leather wrapped. And I wouldn't complain too much about this, except they put put faux leather all along the dashboard. Very nice, soft faux leather with nice, beautiful blue contrast stitching. And it looks really nice and it feels really nice if you were to rub your hand over it. It's very soft and premium for a car like this, but they didn't put it on the steering wheel. You are never going to be touching this dashboard and feeling that beautiful leather. Whereas the steering wheel that you touch every time you drive it, it's a cheaper rubberized plastic sort of feeling that just feels cheap. Same thing goes here along the center console area of the car. A lot of these elements like this rotary knob to control the infotainment. It's pulled from Mazda. This gear selector here is not leather wrapped and feels pretty cheap. You've got gloss plastics all around that are gonna pick up dust and fingerprints really easily. You've also got gloss black here around the climate vents and that doesn't look quite as bad because obviously you're not gonna be touching it like you might be accidentally touching this center console area. So it's not gonna look quite as dirty in a few weeks, but you do have fake carbon accents around that and in this little storage box in the center console area. And those do feel a little bit outdated and cheap, especially when you notice that they don't extend all the way to the back of this box. They stop abruptly at this very large panel gap. Fortunately, you do have some nice features in that box, such as an SD card slot, an auxiliary jack, 12 volt power outlet, and two USB charge ports. So in terms of charging your technology, the Yaris does a great job. But in terms of its own technology, mainly the gauge cluster that I already complained about and that infotainment screen, it does fall a bit short. In fact, that is only a seven inch infotainment touchscreen. Fortunately, it is a touchscreen, yes, but it's very insensitive, doesn't respond very quickly, and is not entirely easy to use with just your fingers. I find it a lot easier to use the rotary dial where there still is a decent amount of lag, but it's at least easier to maneuver with it. Again, in the new Mazda vehicles, this has been updated. This has a completely new design. The new Mazda vehicles are absolutely fantastic, but this model features an old design, old tech. It's just not quite as good as newer cars like the updated 2020 Corolla. The front seats feature a unique, somewhat sporty design with flared out side bolsters that offer six-way manual adjustments or six-way power adjustments depending on what trim level you pay for and what options you select. You also have a somewhat spacious trunk in the back, about average for a class like this. I notice it's maybe a little bit smaller and less usable than the Versa, but it is available with automatic climate control and comes standard with six airbags, so it's a fairly safe car if nothing else. And not surprisingly, the rear seats are just as disappointing as the front, particularly when you take a look at the leg room. I am around six foot one, six foot two. I don't fit back here in any way whatsoever. They're not entirely comfortable either. It's just this same low budget cloth feeling all around, which again, I understand this is a cheap budget car, but keep in mind, you pay extra two, $3,000, you can get upgraded to a nice Corolla with bigger rear seats or pay even more extra money. You can go get a new Mazda 3 hatch, which has the most beautiful interior of any compact car I've been in. It's beautiful, soft leathers all around. Mazda does a great job with their new vehicles. Whereas this Yaris, which pulls everything from the old Mazdas, not quite as good. So all around, if you're looking to buy a new Toyota sedan, I really recommend the 2020 Corolla sedan, Corolla hatch, either one of those cars that I reviewed, a few of them. You can check out that video by clicking on the card right there. Also the new Mazda 3, like I said, this interior features an old Mazda interior, but the updated new ones are a lot nicer. You can check out my review of the new Mazda hatch by clicking on the card right there. Special thanks to Clearwater Toyota for providing me with this Yaris to review today. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching.